it just helps to get in that mental space of I can do this. And once you do it once, I think it really gets you excited to learn more and gets you to that next level of learning and creating. Um, so let's do it. It is time to turn on your Onefinity CNC. I presume you know how to do that. There is just a simple power switch on your control box. And if for whatever reason it's not turning on, just double check the uh, emergency stop button in shipping. I believe that comes pushed in. Um, so you may need to pull out that red emergency stop button and then you'll be able to turn your machine on. So that's step one, go ahead and do that. I already, if you can see all the way in the back, have my red flash drive plugged in back there. That's a USB port and it comes with several ports so it doesn't matter which one it goes in. Just get your flash drive that you saved your file on plugged in and then your screen will begin to boot up. And this is the very first thing you'll see on your monitor and it's asking if you want to home the machine. We are going to do that, but before you do, I want to encourage you to step back and look at your table as a whole. Mine is not exactly <laughs> staged for this, but basically look at your table, make sure it's clear of extra tools or clamps. Make sure your actual machine has room to move. So yeah, go ahead and get your bit loaded into the spindle only use that red spindle lock button to finger tighten it. You do not want to use that um, in combination with your wrench. Ask me how I know. Well, just check out that crack right there. Don't make the same mistake I did. Get your bit snug, but not over tightened in the collet. And this is also a really good opportunity for you to adjust your speed. And I'm not sure which bit you're going to run, but you know, in this video, we prepared our settings for a quarter inch bit, which we said needed 18,000 RPMs, which would be between three and three and a half on the actual router. So go ahead and get your speed adjusted now. And now that you have that set and your work area clear, we can go ahead and home the machine. I'm gonna hit okay. Right now you are seeing it move as far left as it can go and then as far forward as it can go. And then it backs up a little bit to give it a safe homing position. Okay, so I did this cut um, on the 11th, so a couple days ago. And to secure my workpiece down, I used double-sided tape on the back of that, just a couple vertical strips. And then I also utilized my T-Track PowerTech hold downs, which I got on Amazon for a pretty affordable price. And the link for those will be in the description below if you'd like to use something similar. I only bought two little pieces of T-Track and two clamps. Um, I've seen a lot of people go kind of overboard with a ton of T-Track in their spoil board. And then I never see them using their clamps. They're always using double-sided uh, tape. So X-Fasten is one of the most popular double-sided tapes you can use. And that is that. Okay, and this is for demonstration purposes because I've obviously already cut out the square, but I wanted, I wanted to show you guys how to use the touch probe. Let me keep mine right under here. And it has this hollowed out side and that's what you want to put down on the front corner of the wood like so and kind of make it fit on there like a pocket. Um, the banana plug that comes on there goes into that. You can watch Onefinity setup video for this. Um, and then at this point you would need to basically just telling the CNC where the workpiece is. So. For me, that means grabbing my uh, wireless controller or joystick, I should say, and uh, making sure I'm on a reasonable speed setting. This is a slow one. This is about a medium one. 
and you want to jog the bit to be over top of the circle that's right in that corner there. I'm going to lower it down, get a little closer. And once you get close, you want to stop and slow it down even more. Okay, so I just got the bit above that circle right there. Before you hit probe XYZ, you need to actually come here and make sure that's imperial because remember we did everything in inches when we prepared this. So we're going to hit probe XYZ now. And okay, there's one more thing. Whoops. See, it's very smart. I forgot to put the magnet on the collet, which is a very important step. That's what tells the machine where it is. <laughs> so now that I've corrected that, we have to also touch the probe block to the bit. You just have to tap it and put it back down on that corner. I did that and forgot to show you. <laughs> Guys, just a reiteration, I'm a beginner. So I just touched it and got it back snug in that corner. So we're ready to hit the continue button. Oh, and there's another. It's the nice thing is this machine really does prompt you as best it can. And it just wants to double check that that indeed is a quarter inch bit. So set. And then this is what it does. It taps down and then it's going to quickly move to the right and tap that side. And then it's going to move to the back of the probe and tap that side. Each side gets two little taps. And it just moves kind of suddenly. Okay, so then you will get this message on your screen that says probing is complete. Don't forget to put away the probe. So before you even click done, come back over here, remove the magnet from the collet, and remove the probe from your table. So now that that part is done, now you can safely click done. If your finger will work. Okay, so I hit probe XYZ and told the machine precisely where my wood is and then had this warning sign toolpath under. I simply clicked on it so that it would give me some more info and it says the current toolpath file would move below the limit. And I'm thinking, you know what, I didn't, I didn't put in a file. So if you just scroll down, you can see it has, it has a file in here that I did not actually open. Um, so this current setup as it is, is not appropriate for that file. So I'm assuming the warning will go away now. Yep, so that corrected itself. All right guys, now that your CNC knows precisely where your workpiece is, we can move forward and get ready to open the file on our monitor. Simply scroll down here and hit this open button. And then from there, it's pulling straight from the flash drive. It works just like opening a file on your computer. And we want to run the square file that we made earlier and hit open. Then you can see our file is listed right here. And this crazy stuff, that is the G code. So that is what we worked to produce by programming the toolpath with our design in Vectric. Okay, um, you got the file open, your bit is in the chuck, we've probed X, Y, Z, we're ready to run this file, but before you do anything else, now is the time to don your PPE. So put on your safety glasses at the absolute very least. Um, 
I will have dust collection eventually, but it's not quite ready yet. So because of all the dust this is gonna put in the air, I'm gonna wear my 3M respirator, which is right here. This is my favorite setup, and I will put a link to all of these pieces you can purchase through my link with Taylor Toolworks. It is an affiliate link. I will earn a commission and you'll be shopping small, so check out this respirator setup with the link in the description. The other thing that I'm definitely going to wear would be hearing protection because this thing screams like a banshee. So get your PP on and get ready for some noise. <laughs> Before you can hit play on your monitor, you obviously need to manually turn on your router. And I'm not gonna run the file because I clearly already have, but this is what turning this router on will sound like. Pretty sweet. And then once you would have your router on, you would hit play. So total experiment right now, but I had already filmed cutting out this square using the touch probe and uh, probing XYZ with the way that I just showed you, but I want to run that same job again, but in a different spot on the wood. I want to start the same job back here. So I'm not even 100% sure I did this correctly. I think I did, but I just manually moved it with the uh, joystick controller there and slowly lowered it down. I put a little piece of paper under the bit and you basically make it so that you can still twist the bit with your hands, um, but you can still pull the paper out. And then I manually probed XYZ or zeroed XYZ. And I think that means that it'll now start um, right here. I'm going to film it and I'm going to hit play and uh, hopefully that hasn't been all rubbing up on my mic this whole time. There's a really good chance it has been because this is a pretty low budget production in my garage. Anyways, I'm going to push play and uh, see what happens. So I will put on my PPE before I do so. Let's do it. Ah, that was creepy. All right. So right now you're getting a super up close look. Take a look down in that crack. That is the tab that we programmed. That's one of two. The other one is across from it on that side. So that's what's holding it to this workpiece so that it wouldn't absolutely just fly out and hit someone in the face. Choose to put the flat side up against the square with the hopes of it leaving the cleanest side if you have, see, I mean, it was that simple. It's like, it's like, it's like the end of a wiggly tooth, you know? 
when you're about to lose your tooth, but it's hanging on by a string. That's what was just happening. So there was some sticky tape on the bottom of that one as well, which just peels right off and almost have no evidence of your tabs anyways. So there you go. Thanks so much guys for checking out this video. I sincerely hope it was helpful to you and your CNC business growth. If you made it this far, comment below boss, because I have a feeling you're going to be a major boss after watching this video. Um, I really appreciate your viewership here. I'm trying to grow this channel. So you watching a video is actually extremely helpful to me and my small business growth. So thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe hit the bell to stay in the loop um, and get notifications every time another video comes out. If you haven't yet, check out the full CNC playlist here. Um, I started all the way back when I unboxed my Onefinity CNC and I've continued to take anyone who wants to go on the journey with me. Um, I've continued to film all of it just in case it's helpful for someone else. So thanks again. Go get it. So, no. why do I have so, so? I'm definitely being blinded by the light. Blinded by the light. Anyways, um, grab a chisel. Of course, I started recording. So dumb. And a mic so you can hear me telling myself how dumb I am. That's all right. Come on, just stay down here. Just stay down. <laughs>